Hey, uh, Embracer, just, uh, just, just, just a quick question for you. What the hell is going on? You may recall that back in May of 2022, Embracer announced that they acquired a bunch of Square Enix studios that the latter decided to sell off because they were just not generating the kind of profits that Square Enix was hoping to see. Among those acquisitions included Crystal Dynamics, Idas Montreal, and Square Enix uh, Montreal which gave people hope that IPs under the Square Enix umbrella that were kind of just collecting dust could finally see the light of day again with the Embracer acquisition with, you can already see in the comments section how hopeful people were about the fact that the legacy of Kane series is no longer under Square Enix. And now that it's under Embracer, the hope was that this is an IP that could be revisited and revitalized, especially because in Embracer's full statement regarding this whole situation, they straight up talk about IPs like Tomb Raider and Deus Ex, Legacy of Kane, Thief, among other original franchises, how much they value them, and how much they're hoping to be able to tap into them. And this is just to name a few. Square Enix sold off the studios for 300 million US dollars, which for game studio prices, like that is dirt cheap. This is the deal of a lifetime for Embracer here. And we're talking about more than 50 back catalog games from Square Enix that they could have leveraged. And on top of all that, we're talking about an acquisition that represented roughly 1,100 employees across three studios and eight global locations. A lot of who were hoping that uh, their studios could find a new home, one where the publisher would treat them right and would uh, sort of uh, allow them to flourish and thrive with good nourishment. But since that acquisition, it's just been one heartbreaking news after another. It's been studio shutdowns and IPs that don't seem to have any hope of seeing the light of day. And the latest situation involves Embracer Group having canceled a Deus Ex video game that was in development for around two years. And beyond that, Idols Montreal, the studio behind Deus Ex, they got gutted with layoff of an unspecified number of staff. This is something that Idos Montreal would later confirm on their official Twitter page with a following statement published on January 29th, 2024. I'd like to go through this, check this out with you guys. It reads right here that for the last 17 years, our teams at Idos have worked on some of the most beloved brands in the industry, combining deep storytelling and innovation into unique games. We have created memorable multi-awarded experiences that we're proud of, and we know our team members have put their heart and soul in all of them. The global economic context the challenges of our industry and the comprehensive restructuring announced by Embracer have finally impacted our studio. The difficult decision has been made to let go of 97 people from development teams, administration, and support services. The rest of the statement talks about how they want to ensure that impacted personnel see a smooth transition and that they're still committed to making games. So the studio isn't shutting down or anything, but it's been impacted in a way that's felt. And on top of that, a series that people were praying and hoping would see a revival, especially as Square Enix offloaded IPs like Deus Ex towards Embracer, uh, we were met with ultimately disappointment. And this is not the first time something like this has happened. When it comes to layoffs, Embracer, you can see right here, are already making up a significant portion of 2024's layoffs. They're mentioned multiple times here on this website that kind of chronicles the numerous layoffs that have happened this year. One, two, three, four, five, six layoffs concerning uh, studios under their umbrella. And then in 2023, Embracer Group comes up quite a few times here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 of the parent companies that are listed in this list of layoffs for 2023 are comprised of Embracer Group. We're talking about a publisher that when they acquired all of those Square Enix studios had 14,000 employees, 10,000 engaged game developers, and 124 internal studios to juggle with content pipelines, including more than 230 games with more than 30 AAA games. It's very clear that they chewed on way more than they could swallow and now are doing irreparable damage to many beloved IPs and also many beloved game studios. And for fans of series like Deus Ex, it's heartbreaking to know that there was hope that a Deus Ex game was in development for two years before it was canceled. Now, Ida's Montreal has moved on. They're working on a new game right now, and apparently it'll be an original franchise, an original IP, uh, but, you know, the prospect of a new Deus Ex game with the Human Revolution series of games uh, being pretty beloved generally, seeing that have no hope of any kind of revival 
it's just a damn shame. I mean, Deus Ex, the setting is so compelling, and uh, when you can capture sort of the magic that was felt when the original game was released and modernize it, and especially with Cyberpunk 2077 having brought the cyberpunk genre into the mainstream limelight, it felt like this was the right time to to really push some kind of new Deus Ex entry, it also being sort of a cyberpunk style, a sort of RPG focus or role playing focus game with a lot of like narrative elements where, you know, your choices can affect certain outcomes or whatever, or that is very heavily narratively uh, driven and where you can, you know, make your own character builds and stuff like that. It could have been in line with what cyberpunk did. But yeah, it would seem as though Deus Ex is another uh, victim and another casualty in Embracer's woeful mismanagement. And a major component of that mismanagement has to do with Embracer relying on a $2 billion deal with Saudi Arabia's gaming group that ultimately fell through, that ultimately failed, and not being able to rely on that cash flow, placing their bets on that deal going through and having failed. The ones who get to suffer for that miscalculation are the developers and the beloved IPs. Among those who have spoken out include Elias Tufexis, who, for those who don't know, is the voice actor of Adam Jensen, the main character of the Human Revolution series of Deus Ex Games, who just retweeted Jason Schreier's report with, I told you guys it wasn't happening. He doesn't seem particularly hopeful about the future of the Deus Ex series or him returning as Adam Jensen. As much as he's expressed over the months and years how much he's valued playing that role and how much he'd love to return, he also added, if they had been working on a Deus Sex game for two years and they still hadn't contacted me, there's a good chance it wasn't a Jensen story anyway. I'm more pissed for all the people getting laid off. This industry is fucked with this stuff. So it may very well be that Elias Defexes was never going to come back as Adam Jensen. Maybe it was going to be like a reboot with a whole new character and a whole new lore or whatever, but that's still better than nothing. It would have still been Deus Sex returning in some way and it would have been a show of Deus Ex as a franchise not dying off. And now we're just not going to get that. And then on the games media side of things, we got people like Jez from Windows Central, who just straight up said this is really painful and how Deus Ex is one of the most wasted franchises in recent memory. Plenty of people in the comments section agreeing with this sentiment. A journalist like Paul Tassi from Forbes here strip just uh, flabbergasted at this situation, saying this is just unbelievable. Jake Baldino, I think, had one of the takes that I, I, I think put into words what... I felt about this whole situation stating I want to stuff Embrace in our locker for what they've done to working developers and a bunch of legendary game franchises. Absolutely reckless business moves are leading to massive damage to video games with a full scope of the damage not yet realized will be in the history books. I couldn't agree more, especially when you look at situations beyond just Deus Ex. So right here we have a Video Games Chronicle report from November 16th, 2023 that outlines all the different ways that Embracer has killed off projects and studios, all the mishandling of beloved IPs and studios. And you really get to see kind of a general scope of the kind of like gaming history that is being destroyed as these IPs and studios get the worst kind of treatment we could have expected or hoped for. So for example, Saints Row developer Volition got shut down by Embracer after that game, the reboot at Saints Row, ended up being a dumpster fire. And there have been reports that the poorly received tone of this new Saints Row game and the style that they went for, which was very poorly received, had a lot to do with potential publisher interference. But yeah, I mean, Volition just has a lot of history as a developer in the games industry. And to see them shut down and to see them go like this, it just kind of sucks to see. And then on top of that, Campfire Cabal has been shut down. And there are other studios that have reportedly been put up for sale, like Borderlands maker Gearbox. I don't believe a sale of source has gone through for that studio, uh, but you know, Embracer clearly is potentially looking into offloading this studio. And then for the companies who are still up and running, uh, they have seen layoffs that have negatively impacted the studio, like Tomb Raider developer Chris Dynamics, Knights of the Old Republic remake studio Beamdog, and Pinball FX maker Zen Studios, among others. Over 900 employees have been let go during its second quarter that ended in September of 2023. And among those hundreds of employees who have been let go, over half of them were apparently developers. And then when it comes to like games and projects that have been shut down, apparently there are 15 mainly unannounced projects that have been written down across Amplify 
Fire, Free Mode, Gearbox, Play On, Saber Interactive, and THQ Nordic. Another studio that's a big part of gaming history is Free Radical Design, the developers of Time Splitters, which, yes, is a very niche IP, but one that's beloved. Time Splitter is one of those franchises that people who've kept up with gaming history would love to see return in some way, be modernized, and uh, be given the chance to gain mainstream traction. But with studio closure, Time Splitters is another IP that Embracer has killed off, and another uh, game studio from the history books that they have torn and have butchered. Just two years after it was reestablished by Embracer is when this is happening too. So yeah, what we thought was a gift with the offloading of many IPs and studios towards Embracer, now seeing them mismanage this on an epic level nobody anticipated, uh, this has turned out to be more of a curse than anything. When we wished for something like Legacy of Kane to be offloaded from Square Enix, you know, now I can see that monkey's paw, one of the fingers just curling as uh, maybe Legacy of Kane's fate uh, is more cursed now than it was with Square Enix under the umbrella of Embracer, who can't seem to get their shit together. It's worth noting that also under Embracer are projects like the Perfect Dark reboot that Microsoft is developing alongside Crystal Dynamics. And beyond that, Crystal Dynamics is also busy with the next Tomb Raider game that's being made on Unreal Engine 5. I believe these projects are still going. We know that they are still in development, unless behind the scenes there's something going on. But now I fear for Perfect Dark and Tomb Raider and anything that is under the Embracer umbrella, especially something like Legacy of Kane, which I was hopeful would be in good hands under a publisher that seemed really interested in revisiting that IP. And now I fear for the potential mismanagement and project cancellations and potential layoffs and uh, IP murder that could happen if they don't handle that right. And with Embracer now having an extensive track record of not being able to manage all of their IPs and studios and employees properly, I just have a bad feeling about the, the future. And I'm just really pissed off at Embracer, honestly, uh, with uh, how much damage they've done. We can only hope that Embracer can somehow recover from this, get their ducks back in order, and are able to uh, visit certain beloved IPs and do them justice and uh, nurture their studios well. But, I mean, it's impossible to be optimistic when you look at how Embracer has been conducting itself and how incompetent they've been over the last few months and years. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything you need to know about the Embracer situation and one man's take on it. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on what's going on right now with Embracer and all of the studio shutdowns and project cancellations and layoffs that are taking place. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.